Welcome to Wave Wasters, I'm Matt, and today I'm going to design and create the outline as well as the rocker template for my next surfboard. This is the first part in a series of videos I'm going to do on this board, and I've decided to call this board the otter bite because I want it to be somewhat between my short boards and my small wave boards. I want it to be very maneuverable and I want to be able to try to do a little bit more like pop shove it's and maybe some big spins and try to learn more of like uh, chop pop kind of tricks. To design my board I like to use BoardCAD. It's free software and it allows you to create your outline and you can export out a rocker template as well. And I find that really helpful where I'm hot wiring out my own blanks. So with that being said, let's jump into BoardCAD and start designing this board. For this board, I wanted to design something that would fit in between my small wave boards and what I ride in larger surf. I want it to be able to be surfed aggressively when the waves allow, but I also need it to be surfable in weaker waves and allow for tricks like pop shove -its. With these things in mind, I know I need it to be surfable off the nose and I need it to have the right rocker and outline to allow for speed when it's small but also allow it to bite into waves when the surf is larger. To do this, I am going to use what I learned from building and designing my own snowboards to create the right rocker and outline so that they match up and will allow the board to be surfed aggressively off the rail. Going with more of a snowboard mindset will also help solve the issue of surfing off the nose by keeping the tail and nose symmetrical. And this will mean there's more surface area in the nose for doing pop shove -its. And I should be able to surf with the same amount of speed off the nose as the tail aside from the fin sets that I do. With the side cut in this, it's going to match the rocker the right amount so that when the board is put on rail, the complete rail will actually be at the same level and you won't have a dip in the middle that will create drag. And by doing this, when you go off the rail, you're quickly gonna lose the amount of rail line which will allow the board to quickly come out of it. But then when you set the rail again, you have that nice long rail line that allow the board to grip into the wave. Once I have my design finished, I'm going to print the outline and the profile. For the outline, I'm going to make sure I click print along curve. This will make sure that the template when placed on the blank is the correct shape and length. If you don't click this and you place your template on your blank, your template is actually going to be a little bit shorter than if you click print along the curve because the curve is going to slightly change the shape of your board. Once these are printed, I'm going to assemble them. And to do this, I'm going to place them on the floor in the correct order and tape them together. And to make it easier to line them up, I'm going to use a hole punch or trim one edge of the paper so that it makes it easier to align with the next sheet of paper. Once I have it lined up, I'm going to tape them together. And I'm going to do this for all the sheets. When I have all the sheets taped together, I'm going to carefully cut out the template and I'm going to cut it exactly to the line.
Now that I have the outline cut, I'm going to repeat this process to the rocker template. Alright, now that the rocker template and outline are assembled, the next step for this build is creating a template to use to create my blank. And I'm going to hotwire my blank out of an EPS block, but I'm going to save that for the next video. So be sure to tune into that and I'll see you in the next one.